Hi guys, welcome to the Accessible Podcast where I talk about disability justice and rights history. Today, I'm going to talk about the Deaf President Now movement. Now, I know a lot of you don't know this event even happened, but that's because of the biased public school education that picks and chooses what they want to focus on. So let's just start from the beginning. It all started with this guy named Reverend Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet. Good old Thomas was an aspiring character in the deaf community. He was also a hearing individual. In the 1800s, Tom traveled to Europe to learn how Europeans taught deaf students. He went to Martha's Vineyard. No, I'm not talking about that clothing line. I'm actually talking about the island where it was mostly accompanied by deaf people for some reason. I think this is hilarious because you have this island, I mean, in my mind, of course, that is out in the middle of the ocean that deaf people live on and where deaf is the majority and while hearing is a minority. Total utopia, and I love it. But back to the main point, after researching deaf education techniques and picking up a stranger, a.k.a. Laurent, Laurent Clerk, the person who helps Gallaudet through all of this, and they pack up and go back to America to establish the first deaf schools in America, the American School for the Deaf. Except Thomas Dal- Gallaudet wasn't the one that founded Gallaudet University. It was actually his son, Ever Gallaudet, that funded it. And then it was first named Columbia Institution for the Deaf and Dumb, of course, in true ableistic nature. The school obviously was later named Gallaudet University. Now that we have the history of Gallaudet, let's fast forward to the deaf president now protest. It is 1988 and it is time for Gallaudet University's board to elect a new president. The students of Gallaudet were extremely happy for this election because it was the first time they actually believed they were ready for a deaf president. (laughs) Did I not mention that they have never had a deaf president before this? That's right. The deaf Gallaudet University had never had a deaf president. Honestly, it's pretty sadly ironic and it's just so saddening to hear about. But, so you would think the board would listen to the student body and elect a deaf president. (laughs) Wrong. In fact, they elected the only hearing candidate. This brought a reaction to the students. I mean, obviously, rightfully so. Chaos erupted within Gallaudet students, and they immediately marched to the hotel that the board members were staying at. The board members only allowed a select few of students to come and talk to them, And it was even rumored that the head board member, who was of course hearing, stated that deaf people were not able to function in a hearing world. (laughs) What an ableistic statement. I'm so glad that we've all grown from this. But, I mean, how did this even person become the head board member with statements like that? Like, I just don't understand. (laughs) By the second day, the students of Gallaudet were ready to have their voices be heard. They had been up all night deliberating and planning out what was going to happen the next day. They actually went and drove cars and buses to block entrances entrances, and deflated their tires so they couldn't be able to be towed. That is so smart. And I, don't, I give them mad props for being able to think about that. <laughs> but that's not the only thing they did. <laughs> thing that happened. It was also a normal day at school. But the students had created a human chain in front of the doors and only would allow a select faculty in. (laughs) I love it. There was a meeting with the board at noon and the students presented four demands to the board, which were Zinzer, who was the newly appointed hearing president, must resign and a deaf president must be selected, to Spillman, who is the head of the board, must resign from the board. Three, the percentage of deaf members on the board must be increased to at least 51%. And four, there must be no reprisals against any of the protesters. Spillman and the board, of course, rejected these commands. And in the moment of Spillman trying to make a speech on why Zinsler was elected president, there was a deaf faculty member who actually got up and cut her off and signed that the demands weren't met and everyone was encouraged to leave to go to the Capitol building. Oh, did I mention that Gallaudet was right by our nation's capital? 
Luckily, it was. On day three of the protest, it was picking up national attention. With all of this new attention, the group needed leaders to successfully be a voice for the group. Four students came forward. Bridgetta Bourne, Larry Cobell, Greg Hellebrook, and Tim Roris. And now let's skip to day five with lots of marches and speeches were given in between. But this night was not like any other night because this was the night that Zinzer finally announced her resignation as Gallaudet president. And it took three more days on day eight is when the protesters came to an end. The board had announced that Spillman had resigned, who was the head of the board, remember? Well, not anymore, obviously. A task force would be set up to determine the best way to achieve the 51% deaf majority on the board, no reprisals, and Dr. L. King Jordan was named the 8th president and first deaf president of Gallaudet University. So why is this such a big deal? There was a couple of reasons. It showed that disabled people have a voice and a right for what they believe in. It also allowed deaf people to embrace deafness as a culture and fight for their place in hearing culture. It was also more than just another disability movement. It was a protest for civil rights for people. Also, this protest happened in a week. I mean, there's so much that happens in a week, but weeks are short in comparison to how you can make multi monumental changes within a corporation especially like a university like Gallaudet so that's crazy that it happened all within a week and a day also the last point I want to sh point out of course it's pretty incredible to show the world how there is a people behind the label deaf people okay well, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope that you had fun listening and learning about what happened with the Gallaudet protest. In terms of technology, technology was protest itself and, of course, language, which was sign language. But the deaf president now protest was an amazing piece in history that everybody should learn about even if you are disabled or not i want to wish you guys a great day and i'll hopefully see you next week bye